you would look over every heart and every mind and anything that is in us, Lord, that would stand in opposition to your word, anything in us, oh God, that would prevent a moving of the spirit. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would answer with fire from on high, that you would burn upon the sacrifice, Lord. Leave nothing left but you, Lord Jesus. We must decrease, Lord, and you must increase, oh God. So, Lord, whatever it takes, Lord, whatever it takes to purify us, oh Lord, I pray that you would make us vessels meet for the master's use. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every mind and heart, oh God, and I thank you that you are a God who not only hears us when we pray, but you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins if we will but confess them to you, oh God. So, Lord, in truth and in humbleness and in ashes, we come before you, and we say, Lord, that we could not save ourselves. We could not draw ourselves out of the miry clay. Lord Jesus, we could not save ourselves if it was not for you, Lord, if it was not for the cross, if it was not for every drop of blood that was shed for us at Calvary. So I thank you for it, Jesus. I thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you for your perfect life that you lived. I thank you, Lord, that you are the perfect sacrifice that could be slain for the world, Lord, that there could be a redemption and a reconciling of man back to yourself. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would let the water of the word wash over this congregation, that you would cleanse us and purify us, oh God, according to the power of that word. Lord Jesus, I pray that as your spirit manifests itself in this house, Lord, let there be signs and wonders. Do great exploits amongst your people. Lord Jesus, we read it in scripture, and I thank you for everything that you have done, and I am asking you to do it again, God. Do it again, God. We are a people called by your name. Our hope and our salvation is in you, Christ Jesus, because you are our rock and our strong tower. We run into you and find safety, Lord. So blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Lord God, I pray that there would be a divine outpouring, Lord. Let that spirit flow, Lord Jesus, but help us to take on the mind of Christ. Help us to be ever mindful of you, seeking your face always, Lord, that we could see where your very eye is looking, oh God. I pray that you would shape us and mold us into whatever you have us to be. God, I pray for the leadership of our county, our state, and for our nation. Lord, our nation needs you. There is a people that will be lost if there is not a revival of hearts, Lord. So I speak to the Valley of Dry Bones. I thank you for every piece that you have salvaged. I thank you that you have not thrown any of us away, oh God. I thank you for second chances, Lord. I thank you for the blood, Lord Jesus. I pray that there would be more that would find you. Let there be more that would come, oh God, because your word says if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. Lord Jesus, we are a people that are hungry. We are a people that are thirsty for your righteousness, oh God. Lord, I pray that your spirit would be the provision for this people. Give us this day our daily bread, Lord. Prepare our hearts and prepare our minds. Let it be done according to your word, Lord Jesus, that all the nations of the earth would know that there is a God in Israel, that there is one true living God, and that his name is Jesus Christ. Lord God, there's no one like you in all heaven or in all the earth, Lord. There's none before you, none beside you, nor should there be any after you, because you are the first and the last, my Lord. You are the rose of Sharon, and you are the lily of the valley. You are our shield and buckler, Lord. In you we find safety. In you we find refuge, O God. In you we find rest for our souls. Thank you, God, for every burden that we've been able to lay at your feet. And you have set us at perfect liberty, O God. I thank you for every chain that's been broken. I thank you, O God, that you conquered death, hell, and the grave. So, Lord, I speak against the spirit of anxiety, depression, and fear. It has no place amongst the people of God. Lord Jesus, we rebuke anything that would set itself up against the knowledge of you. Every imagination, Lord, and we lift up your name, Lord Jesus. We lift up your name. Church, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that hath breath Praise ye the Lord.
somebody so would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, burning with the Holy Ghost. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, burning with the Holy Ghost. The day of Pentecost had fully come. They were all in one place. They were all in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound like a rushing mighty wind. It filled the house that they were sitting in. Yeah, I wish somebody so would catch on fire. Catch on fire. Catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire. Burning with the Holy Ghost. Appeared under the hill, clove in tongues, just like fire, shut up in my bones. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, they spoke in other tongues as he gave utterance. Yeah, I wish somebody so would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, burning with the Holy Just like the Bible says Well, I've been to the water and I've been baptized My soul got happy and got satisfied Oh, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now Just like the Bible, just like the Bible Just like the Bible says I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul just like the Bible said, I got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like the Bible said, Oh, I've been to the water and I've been baptized. My soul got happy and I'm satisfied. And I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Just like the Bible, just like the Bible. Just like the Bible says yeah, I wish somebody so would Catch on fire Catch on fire Catch on fire I wish somebody so would Catch on fire Burning with the Holy Ghost Yeah, I wish somebody so would Catch on fire Catch on fire Catch on fire I wish somebody so would Catch on fire
John answered them, saying unto them, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. If you are thankful for the Spirit of God, if he has set your soul on fire, if it is shut up in your bones, lift up your voice and praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus, you are worthy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Welcome to First Pentecostal Church. If you are a guest with us, please excuse us. That is the overflow of a forgiven soul, and this is Jubilee. We are celebrating the Spirit of God and what He's done for us. We have several announcements if you could please make your way back to your seats. Remember tomorrow Crusaders Camp should be at the church at 5 a.m. to load the bus leaving just after. 5 a.m. Crusader Campers, remember that. Wednesday Word and Worship Youth and Kids Church at 7 p.m. Wednesday there is a meeting in the upper room following service for all those attending senior conqueror and teen camps with their parents. Friday, there's youth rec at 7 p.m. in the gym. Saturday, we have door knocking at 10 a.m. We're meeting in the annex parking lot for our departure to go out and reach our community. Church, we're well able to take the city. We're well able to take the city, and I pray that the door knocking is fruitful in Jesus' name. Next Sunday is Father's Day, a.m. service only. Remember, uh, men's prayer breakfast, 7th Sunday, June 20th, 8.30 a.m. in the gym. Sign up at the information desk. There will be a bake sale in the foyer, and the proceeds will benefit the Move the Mission, formerly Sheaves for Christ. Please contact Sister Ashley Knighton if you would be able to donate to a baked goods sale. And if you would please be seated for a short video. We are called to move the mission. It's got to move you. It's got to somehow get down into the emotions of your mind. It's got to reach your heart until it will cause you to weep for the souls of men. And then I'd like to say to you tonight that we have the word of God on which we can stand to move this world need to get your mind on the things that God wants us to have and that's to be renewed so that we can have a worldwide vision and realize the purpose of our existing is to get the whole gospel to the whole world. The need is to move the mission. What? 
have you done to make sure the gospel will continue to be preached? It's not time for us to become passive. United Pentecostal Church, it's time to preach the word. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I will cross any river. I will climb any mountain. I will pay any price. I will bear any burden. Give me the hard road. What we need are people that can move. Who will go? Praise the Lord, church. It is that time of year again, year again where we kick off our fundraising effort for Move the Mission, formerly known as She's for Christ. Now, we did ask Brother Jeremy if he would fly down from Missouri to kick us off, but he declined. <laughs> he said, you can do it. I said, thank you. But first off, we are thankful for Pastor and Sister Kinsey and their continual support of Move the Mission, formerly She's for Christ. We are thankful for FPC for your continual giving to move the mission. Because of you, we are consistently one of the top giving churches in the UPCI. Thank you. <laughs> move the mission is the fundraising arm of UPCI Youth Ministries. When you give to move the mission, you're supporting many different ministries, including North American Youth Congress, Florida District Youth Camps and Conventions, you're giving to Tupelo's Children Mansion, Lighthouse Ranch for Boys, scholarships for Bible College students, vehicles for missionaries around the world, and much more. This year, the goal for Uprush Youth and FPC is to raise $30,000 from Move the Mission. We'll be conducting many different fundraisers this year, including Father's Day Bake Sale. Please see Sister Ashley Knighton if you have uh, food to donate. We're having Uprush gear sales. Young people, check social media for details on buying Uprush gear. We'll have a district-wide move-a-thon layer this year and much more. The offering date is August 29th. However, if you're able to give before then, please feel free to do so. When giving, please mark your gift as Move the Mission or simply EMTM. As our official kickoff today, we'll have young people stationed around the information desk with three sets of envelopes numbering 1 through 100. We ask that if you are able, please choose an envelope and give the amount, or if you're feeling generous, more in that envelope. If all envelopes are returned, we would have raised $15,150, a little more than half of our goal. When you give to move the mission, you are helping to move the gospel all over the world. Your sacrificial gift will make a difference in the lives of countless people so will you help us move the mission forward and help us share the gospel around the world? God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Seth. If our ushers would please make their way on down, you can please rise. We are going to go before the Lord at this time with our offering and with our tithing and with any giving that God has led us to, to do. I don't know about you, but there is no greater thing that you can give to than the kingdom of God. To seek and to save that which was lost and to reach the world and those that are in need. So these missions fill those needs and they close that gap so that those people can see and feel Jesus in their lives. That's why we do this. That's why we do this. And we're also going to give tonight to bless the work of God and the house of God in obedience to his word. So let's ask God to bless this offering and then worship with us as we sing. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you've given us one more chance to give. We thank you for the opportunity to bless the house and bless the kingdom of God. I pray that you would take whatever this is that you receive and increase it, Lord, for the greater good and for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray.
and I want you to sing it together all over this house. Let's sing this song and let's sing it in worship to Jesus Christ. Let the fire on the altar never burn out. never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. That's what this place needs to be. It's a house of prayer. We need to heed the call to war begin to seek God's faith by outpouring of His Spirit. your hands and worship the Lord. Let the presence of the Lord that's in this place minister his love and his grace to your spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have been so blessed for the past several weeks to be in revival and several have received the gift of the Holy Ghost, been baptized in Jesus' name. We're going to be looking forward to discipling them and we need people to step up and adopt these people and begin to pull them around yourself and put them under your wing and let them know that this church loves them. People need community and they need fellowship and they need to know that they just didn't come to church by themselves. They've got a whole entire family of brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers that can love them and care for them because the harvest does not stop at the altar. The harvest continues beyond the altar because they need to experience a transformed life and there's no way better for them to do that than to see Jesus in your life and then it to be imparted to them. Brother and Sister Welch, we love you dearly, and we are just enjoying your ministry here in Pensacola. I want you to come, preach to us the word of the Lord. Are you thankful to be in God's house? Give him one more hand clap together. Lord, we honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You're standing tonight, and we'll be looking at Numbers 24. 
And as you're turning to Numbers 24, let us again acknowledge and rejoice about the good things that the Lord has been doing. Thankful just to stop in and be a small part of what God continues to do in the First Pentecostal Church. Hallelujah. We're so thrilled about that, so thankful God is working. Thank God for those who've received the Holy Ghost and been baptized. God, just let it continue on, God, in the name of Jesus. Praise God. We'll be looking at Numbers 24, but we just uh, are so grateful for all the kind things that have been done for us. Uh, Pastor, Sister Kenzie, we love you immensely. Words fail to say how much we really appreciate you, and thank you again for everything. Uh, just so grateful for all the staff and friends who have been so kind to us, Brother Daniel Strobel going the extra mile to help us so many times, and Sister Dana, and all the wonderful saints of God, and um, just so rejoicing about everything that God is doing. And uh, let's read tonight from Numbers 24 and verse number 9. Numbers 24 and verse number 9. If you have that, say amen. amen. Verse 8 mentioned that God can devour his enemies. But verse 9 says this. He couched, he lay down as a lion. And as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. Father, bless your people. Give us a revelation of understanding of your greatness again tonight. We pray in the power of the name of Jesus. God bless you all. Thank you for standing to honor the word of the Lord. And thank you again to everyone and to Noah for being a buddy to Bentley this whole time, thank you for that, and for Ava and Ella and Elise, and Elise is uh, the princess, praise God, and uh, thank God for a princess, and uh, I know she has your, I know she has your heart, Brother Daniel and Ava and Ella, but I know they got, the, I know they got the pastor's heart, hallelujah. Uh, he lights up when they walk in the room, praise God. Numbers 24 and verse 9 says, this is right in the midst of the narrative historical portion about Balaam, but I'm not preaching about Balaam tonight. I'm preaching uh, from the idea that God is a lion. As a matter of fact, my uh, title tonight is Don't Kick the Lion. Don't kick the lion. And, uh, of course, Balaam found out that God is a lion. And that's exactly what this portion of Scripture is about. But Isaiah 31 and 4 says, He's like a lion upon his prey, and he will destroy those that fight against him. And Hosea 5 and 14 says, He will be as a lion to Ephraim as a young lion to the house of Judah. In Revelation 5 and 5, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And you know if you've been in this place uh, more than a week or two that God is distinctly represented in Scripture many ways, but emphatically as the lion. No doubt about it. God is a lion. And the good news is tonight, if you're on the side of the lion, there is a power, there is a force that's working for you that is beyond our vocabulary to describe. That's what's so amazing about people that come to God. They may not realize for some time that when you start serving God and walking with God, you are not alone, but there is a power that is working with you. And you'll begin to wonder why people express their emotions and say, I just feel something when I'm around you. Since you've gotten the Holy Ghost, uh, something is different. There's a power. There's an electricity about you. You've got something. And that is uh, that spirit of a lion. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm preaching tonight. Don't kick the lion. <laughs> Daniel chapter 6, the Bible says that Daniel was a man somewhat like David after God's heart. He had an excellent spirit. Matter of fact, Daniel had 
uh, all good commendations from the Lord, something like Joshua. <laughs> but Daniel, uh, the Bible says, had found favor with King Darius uh, and had excelled uh, in administration. And over, over the 120 provinces, uh, the Bible says that Daniel was one of the three presidents uh, and the first of those. He was preferred above all others because of the great spirit that's within him. I'm looking for Daniel tonight. I saw him singing tonight. I always kid with, with him. Young man that I refer to as Daniel. That's not his name. But where are you at, Daniel? Just wave at me. Hallelujah. Is he over there somewhere? Somebody's pointing at him. But Daniel had an excellent spirit. He had a smile on his face. He had a gleam in his eye. Praise God. I, I, I like to think uh, when we have an excellent spirit that God can work with us. We're more pliable. And when we have that excellent spirit, uh, God doesn't mind promoting us on our job. God doesn't mind promoting us in the kingdom of God. I want to tell you, I still believe attitude uh, is far greater uh, than talent any day of the week. Uh, I thank God for talented people. Uh, but, oh, I love people uh, that have a good spirit uh, and a good attitude. Uh, and, God, I'm not a pastor, but if I were a pastor, I'd tell you one thing. I'd be looking for those uh, with the right spirit. Uh, I'd be looking for somebody like Daniel. Uh, I'd be looking for, hey, I'm thankful uh, that you can sing like the angels. Uh, but I really want to know, how's your spirit tonight? Uh, I'm thankful uh, you can play an instrument better than anybody in this state. Uh, but I want to know, uh, how's your spirit? Spirit, hallelujah. And the Bible says Daniel had an excellent spirit, and God was able to promote him even in his earthly endeavors, his occupation, the administration in the kingdom. But the Bible says that his fellows were jealous of him, his co workers were jealous of him. The the president and the rulers of the kingdom conspired against him. And they said, we are tired of Daniel receiving all the accolades. We're tired of this man who serves that so-called God being exalted. They joined together in accusation and began to try and accuse Daniel of something. But quickly they realized this is a fruitless effort. Daniel's a good man. And everything we say, nobody's going to believe. The only thing we can do is try and find something against the law of his God. You remember how that they conspired and they, they, they convinced Darius to uh, put into act a law that you could not pray to anyone else uh, for 30 days. Uh, there was a silence on all prayer for 30 days. How do you like that? And you know what Daniel did. He opened the windows wide. And he prayed three times a day in a loud voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can't stop prayer. There's no law that can stop prayer. I want to tell you, somebody said they took prayer out of school, but as long as they give tests on Friday, there's always going to be prayer in school. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? That's the only way we made it through. Hallelujah. But finally, they caught Daniel, threw him in the lion's den. They prepared destruction for Daniel. Much like the evil Haman who prepared a gallows for Mordecai, but finally he found himself on the gallows that he prepared for Mordecai. Much like those soldiers who threw in the Hebrew boys into the fiery furnace, they are the ones that suffered the heat from the fire. And again, we see it. The accusers of Daniel have thrown him in. But God is on the side of Daniel. And what they did not realize is that you can't use the lion against the people of God. <clears throat> 
Somebody's trying to throw you in the den of lions. Somebody's trying to throw you under the bus. Somebody's trying to accuse you and mock you and make fun of you. And they're trying to put you in the den of lions. But they don't know that you live in the den of the lion. This is the den of the lion. This is where the lion lives, brother. <laughs> so many people through history have suffered at the hand of God. We serve a big God, folks. <laughs> we serve a big God. <laughs> and he told Job, where were you when I formed and laid the foundation of the earth? Uh, that's what God says to all of us. Uh, you're not all that. Uh, he says, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? In Galatians 6 and 3, he said, when a man thinks he is something, uh, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Uh, I'm not saying that we should feel cast down tonight, but I am saying we should acknowledge uh, the sovereignty and God that we serve. We should all be careful not to trample on the precepts of God's word. Oh, hallelujah. I know he's kind and he's loving and he's merciful. And brother, I preached all over that this morning. But at the same time, let me have a healthy fear of the almighty God. He's a big old God, brother. And I want to tell you, I don't want to make the mistake of falling on the wrong side of the almighty. Not for one second, brother. Not for one moment. Moment. Uh, I want to reverence and honor the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords. Uh, hallelujah. More than any earthly king, he holds all power. Uh, there's no argument against his word. His ruling is final. Uh, there is no other court to take it to, brother. Uh, when you step on the wrong side of God, he is that word. Yeah. Hallelujah. So many times we thought, saw it through Scripture. I would have liked to quickly ran through a context of those who fell on the wrong side of God, but the list is too exhaustive in Scripture. Adam and Eve fell out first and found that God can have judgment. All the people during the flood of Noah suffered at the hand of God. Those at Sodom and Gomorrah saw fire rain down from the sky. The the, 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 the man called Korah and all of his follower, followers saw the earth open up uh, and swallow them. Uh, I want to tell you, the young people that mocked Elisha found out that beasts could come out of the forest uh, and devour them. Uh, the people at the Tower of Babel uh, had all of their languages confounded because they fell under the hand of God. Achan stirred the anger of God by partaking of evil things that were forbidden. Uh, Uzzah, who touched the ark, uh, instantly falls dead against the command of God. Uh, and Belshazzar, uh, who provoked God uh, and had a party uh, with the, the holy vessels from the temple, saw the handwriting on the wall. Uh, and that supernatural event uh, that happened under torchlight uh, made that great king uh, to tremble. Uh, and his very knees began to shake uh, because, brother, we serve a big God. Uh, and no man lifted up uh, can contend uh, with the great power of the Almighty. Uh, and I want to tell you, he's in this house. Uh, and that's not to discourage you, uh, but that's to light your fire. Uh, because if God be for you, uh, who can be against you? Uh, no weapon formed against me can prosper. Uh, I might be small in stature. Uh, I, not, I might not be all that big a boy. Uh, but brother, if God's on my side, uh, all of hell come against me. I will prevail. I will prevail. God is with me. Hallelujah. And he said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. What a promise to have that kind of power working with you. Hallelujah. But when you carry that kind of firepower around with you, there's a great responsibility that comes with it. Brother, if you're going to carry those firearms with you you got to be careful you don't shoot your own self because truthfully that's what happens more times than an encounter with an enemy <laughs> praise God handle it carefully handle that responsibly brag about it yes <laughs> but brother 
handle that responsibly. Sometimes I think about the ministry and what a privilege that is, but oh, what a responsibility. Like the young man who wanted to swing the axe. <laughs> How beneficial that can be, but oh, how dangerous for those who in their folly and mischief would take advantage. God, help me to recognize that you are the supreme being. My voice must be in submission to the will of God. If I ever let my will get out of place, brother, it's going to wreak havoc. If my desires become the notion, brother, it's not preaching. It's just man's wisdom. But, brother, under the unction and the power of the Holy Ghost, submissive to the man of God, submissive in order to the work of God. When all things are in order, brother, and the power of God is working for us, we can break through those invisible barriers that hinder us from revival. We can be delivered from sicknesses and pain and adversities. Oh, hallelujah. When all things are in order, brother, the power is working for you. And that's why it's so important to have a man of God in your life, to be submissive to a church family, and to be accountable to the work of God. Say, well, I'm just going to have church at home. I'm just going to do my own thing. And brother, that is the word of everyone who has been destroyed before you that says, I'm going to do my own thing and brother when you do your own thing you're in danger of the almighty brother you're going to shoot your own foot you're going to If the only counsel you take is your own counsel, you have made yourself your own God. And you are serving self more than God. But God, give me a voice in my life. And furthermore, God, give me the ability to be submissive to the voices in my life. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody ought to clap their hands to the Lord. I'm just not sure about serving God. It just seems like uh, churches only want your money. Uh, Oh, no. Uh, God don't need the money. Uh, But your uh, spirit needs to be submissive to the work of God. Uh, You need to give uh, more than God needs to receive. Uh, Giving to the church of God financially uh, is not about uh, somebody getting rich uh, or, or... No, it's about you being faithful to the kingdom of God. It's about you being honorable to the to the man of God. Oh, hallelujah. If you believe in giving faithfully to the kingdom of God, come on and clap your hands. We need a testimony right now. Somebody's living under a spirit of poverty because you have not yet embraced the principle of giving to the kingdom of God. A spirit of poverty is robbing you. I'd rather have 90% that's blessed than 100% that's cursed. Oh, hallelujah. God can do more with 90% than you could ever do with 100%. Be faithful to God and see if that force, if you got a business, I want to tell you, you ought to just embrace that financial plan that God has because you know what? God has a way of just empowering your business. I've seen it in my own family, in my own family business. I'm thanking God for a dad who faithfully gives to the Lord. He came to God kind of late in life and he felt like he had some ground to make up. He said, you know what? It's not commanded, but I just feel like trying to give 20 (laughs) percent uh-oh I'm in dangerous ground right now hey that's not doctrine that's not scripture that was just the heart of a man of God I believe he on I have seen God honor that I've seen God deliver when things were going south God comes out of nowhere and delivers us when things don't seem to be lining up God comes out of nowhere and God opens the sky and out of heaven itself God blesses his people if you've ever been blessed you ought to shout to heaven right now oh hallelujah yes God Hey, the lion is working for you. Hallelujah. The world and the enemy is trying to send a devourer. But brother, we live in the lion's den. And this is the house of God. And he is the power that works for us. Yes, yes, yes. God help us to be cautious 
Don't let us push your grace and mercy. I thought about people through history who had provoked God. Those people who were the crew members of the Titanic, it was said that some of them said that God himself could not even sink this ship. I don't believe that God did it. Just the folly of man. But nevertheless, their words had to be swallowed. It's recorded that John Lennon said that Christianity will soon die. And the Beatles are now more popular than Jesus Christ. That's what I call kicking the lion. <laughs> That's not too smart. Maybe not to such extremes, but people in your life do that every day. Sometimes unknowingly. I was in a place of business a few weeks ago, and the owner was a very loud, boisterous fellow, and you could hear his voice all over, and someone obviously called on the phone and upset him, and he went off the handle, and I was not in the room, but I could hear him down the hallway, and his vocabulary quickly changed, and then he began to say things that I felt like were cursing God. Brother... I quickly got out of the building because I know <laughs> if you're going to curse anything, don't curse God. I don't want to stand beside somebody who's bold enough to curse God. I know they're on your job. They don't know any better, and thank God for his mercy. <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> don't curse God. If you're going to pick a fight with somebody, brother, don't pick a fight with God. <laughs> and somebody said, if you're going to get in a boxing match, don't box with God <laughs> because your arms are way too short. Hallelujah. <laughs> Daniel, we're going to throw you in there. We don't like you. Why don't we like you? Because you got a good spirit. Isn't it amazing how a good spirit can make you despised and a target? There's people on your job that take advantage of you because you're apostolic, because you're Pentecostal. There's people at your school who whisper in the corner how you dress and how you look and you represent God and they really don't like that. Sure, it still happens today. We're not naive to that. But you just keep on standing up like Daniel of old and saying, you know what? I'm going to keep representing the kingdom of God. I still believe that our apostolic ladies look beautiful. I still believe that men represent the kingdom of God to the glory of Him. Hallelujah. I'm going to be a Daniel in this society and I reflect used to bow down to the golden images and the idols of this world. I'm not going to kick the lion. He is a great and mighty and force power. Hallelujah. I might have told you, but it's worth telling you again. My missionary friend told me in Africa, everyone that comes to visit him wants to see the lions. So he takes them over to the local fenced-in safari so they can quickly see all of the animals without going out into the bush. It's a drive-through affair. They open the gate, you drive through. And he recounts an instance just a year or two ago where an individual in the drive-through safari was brave enough to get out of his vehicle in the lion's den. He was trying to take some pictures. The lions were huddled in a corner, lethargic and sleepy, and they would not move. And he got out of his car and began to scream at them, but they would not move. Began to toss pebbles at them, trying to get them to move in a different position. Finally, oblivious, he walks over and begins to motion and try and herd them as cattle with his hands. Those lions did not pay this man any attention. And the report in the newspaper said that the man finally walked over and with his foot tapped one of the lions. It goes without saying, his obituary was in that same paper. Missionary report. True story. This man obviously did not know the nature of the lion. He may not say a word when you shout, 
He may not say a word when you wave and do all sort of crazy things. But Belshazzar found out there is a moment when you provoke God and you cross the line. There's a scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes that is so powerful that says, Because judgment is not vindicated quickly, the hearts of men are established to do evil. Let us not be naive. Because punishment does not come in this life does not mean that God gives His stamp of approval on sin. Say, well, somebody's been sinning for 10 years and it seems like God approves that they're blessed and they're financially... Hey, remember this, that our judgment does not come in this earth. The way of a transgressor is hard and life may be difficult because of our own ignorance, but judgment does not come in this lifetime. It comes in eternity. In the same way, blessings do not come necessarily only on the earth, but they come in heaven. And though you might not... You serve God and you feel blessed and you're financially empowered and you feel good and all of that and those are blessings for the moment but they are not the real blessing which is heaven above. Eternity holds our final blessing and eternity holds judgment for the evildoers. And furthermore, the New Testament says don't judge anything before it's time. Even the most vile and corrupt and evil people, don't judge them too quickly because until eternity starts they still have a chance to turn around they might be a Saul of Tarsus who turns out to be an apostle Paul and the New Testament said don't judge anything before it's time but just warn them and caution them that we serve a mighty God don't kick the lion don't provoke him to anger though he might be silent for a thousand times when you finally cross the line he will devour and the army of Sennacherib found out that one angel can destroy 185,000 soldiers because when God gets ready to fight with you there's no army on this earth that can contend with you the media team has been so wonderful to help me but this last scripture I'll present to you is Proverbs 28 and verse 1 Proverbs 28 and verse 1. It's worth pausing for tonight. And uh, Sister Perkins and Brother Perkins have been so faithful to help me. Thank you for going out of your way. But Proverbs 28, if we can possibly have that. The Bible says, The wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Not only is God represented as a lion, but the people of God, when they're in harmony with God, are represented as the lion. Hallelujah. The wicked run from their shadows, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. One of my favorite texts in the entire Bible. Maybe it's because I was so meek and shy and timid growing up. I just thank God that the righteous can be bold as a lion in the spirit. Hallelujah. (laughs) Sister Perkins helped me, and I presented to her a a sound clip of a roaring lion. I I feel like it'll emphasize maybe the power of the lion, but not just yet. Get ready for it, because I don't want it to startle you, but we're going to let the lion roar. Hallelujah. (laughs) Sister Kenzie's here. She's such a meek and mild and sweet person. And holding a, Elise, I mean just a picture of gentleness. Do you have one spare hand to lift up, sister? But do you know when this woman of faith prays? It might be kind of quiet. I want you to hear what the devil hears, hallelujah. Well, go ahead and see if it'll play. Maybe it'll work for us. You got it. <laughs> That was good. Turn that up just a little bit. Hallelujah. That's what the bass players say, isn't it? Can't the preacher say that? (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, hallelujah. Woman of faith, <sighs> who am I? When, mo when mother prays, come on, let me hear it one more time. <laughs> There's a spiritual revelation about to happen right now for somebody in this house. Lord, I would to God somebody would just begin to intercede right now. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You thought the enemy had advantage over you. He threw you in the lion's den, but... The lions are not going to devour you. They're working for you. God is with. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Huh? And his people huh, are like bold lions in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. I got another revelation for you right now. And we're going to pray. I got another revelation for you. I'm an evangelist. And this has been the highlight of always... It's always the highlight of my life to come and to minister to First Pentecostal Church. Maybe I don't go on enough about it, how much of a privilege that is, because I'm so intent on getting to the business of the message. But hear me. I'm just a young man. And brother, when I have the opportunity to hear your pastor preach, It takes me about two seconds to realize, brother, I got a long, long way to go. And the breadth and the width and the depth. <laughs> brother, when you're a man of God, I, I know of not another man of God who holds more spiritual authority than this man. I know not another scholar that's uh, above this man. I want to tell you when he might, he might feel weak in his body at times, but you hear when his voice comes across this pulpit. How about one more time? Let me hear what the lion says. Oh, hallelujah. You ought to rejoice when your man of God preaches in this pulpit. Uh, he's tearing down strongholds of the enemy. Uh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, uh, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down uh, of strongholds. Uh, and the voice of the man of God uh, stands in this pulpit. Uh, he's fighting for you. Uh, he's battling all of hell for you uh, and for your family. Uh, and the mother of this church uh, is praying uh, in the Holy Ghost. Uh, thank God. Uh, we live in the lion's den. Uh, God is on our side. Get behind me, Satan. God is fighting for us. Come on, you ought to come to this altar and lift up your hands and rejoice that God is on your side. Rejoice that God is on your side. Come on and help me. That's it. That's it. Come on down to this altar. If you're fighting a spiritual battle, tonight is your moment of breakthrough. If you're fighting sickness, tonight is your moment of breakthrough. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on down to this altar. The lion of the tribe of Judah is going to do battle for you. Come on. The lion of the tribe of Judah is going to do battle for you. Hallelujah. You know what? Right at the onset, I need everybody that feels like the devil has put you in the den of lions. Come on right here to the middle. You're facing circumstances. You're facing sickness. You're facing financial problems. You're facing adversity on your job or in your school. I need all the Daniels to come on down here right now. I need you in the center of the room. We're going to help you worship until the victory falls. We're going to help you worship until the... Hey, this is an apostolic church on Sunday night. The world is worshiping all of their idols and all of their sports teams. But we're going to lift up the name of Jesus Christ for just a few minutes here tonight. He is the lion. Sister Perkins, I might wear this out, but I feel like hearing that one more time. Are you able? Somebody ought to shout right now. Glory. Yes, God. 
Yes, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. How about we do it one more time on the count of three? Why don't we shout unto God? One, two, three. Hallelujah! 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 Come on and sing about the lion for me. I wonder how you would dance if you knew God was fighting your battle. <laughs> I wonder how you would rejoice if you knew God was working it out. <laughs> yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. <laughs> Can you sing it for me? Go ahead. Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power.
Right now, people are receiving the Holy Ghost uh, all over. People are receiving the strength of God all over this house. Uh, I would to God you'd lift up your voice. Uh, come on. Uh, the wicked flee when no man pursues, uh, but the righteous uh, are as bold as a lion. Uh, get the spirit of the lion upon you. Uh, come on now uh, and do battle in the spirit. Uh, pray a prayer of intercession. Uh, believe God for another miracle. Uh, let your voice uh, rise in faith as the army of God. Oh, hallelujah. Rejoice that God is your salvation. He's here right now. He's about to break down every barrier that is holding you now. For in the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Come on right now with a voice like a lion. Come on and let God work. Come on and let God work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lo, lo, ho, si, la, ba, ha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Come on, people are receiving the Holy Ghost. That's the voice uh, that you're hearing of people desperate for a touch. Uh, that's a voice you're hearing uh, a people desperate for a miracle uh, over here on the side come on and lay hands on somebody uh, who needs the lion uh, of the tribe of judah uh, to work for them uh, god i pray over this brother right now uh, open doors for him that no man can shut uh, god bless this sister right now uh, with spiritual renewal uh, right now uh, right now uh, right now I believe the word of the night, uh, that final victory will come in a moment of radical worship to God. Uh, late in this hour, right now, if you can begin to magnify God uh, with a dance, uh, with a shout, uh, with a clapping of your hands, uh, I believe the walls will crumble uh, at the voice of a worshiper. Uh, come on now, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah, right now.
Right. 